we go. Well, hello, everyone. This is our free Tuesday training, and I want to welcome you here. I have Jim Carroll, my partner in this uh, endeavor, here with me, <laughs> and I'm Boyd Peterson. Uh, between us, we, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to be talking about the, uh, the new office type uh, situation that's going on, uh, where, you know, some people are working from home, some people are working from an office, some people are hybrid. And we're going to talk a lot about that today because, you know, we've got some things going on and there's people that we work with that are uh, are really having some struggle with this. And in fact, Jim, tell them what you heard today that uh, the state of Utah just was saying. <laughs> well, just today, uh, they came out on the news and made an announcement um, because of the, the, the more recent uh, uh, COVID outbreak. Um, they said anybody that can work from home should stay home and work from home. And, and there's a couple of tacts on uh, how that works or why that works, um, but certainly they don't wanna reinfect more people or, or get more people uh, affected, nobody does. Um, but um, it, it, there's two tacts that I really wanna go down this road and, and we'll, we'll go down both paths, I think. But um, people, I think, uh, are honestly more productive when they work from home just in general. I'm just gonna say that. Um, there's a bunch of reasons why we'll come back to that. Um, the state was um, kind of crazy about talking about, um, you know, the environmental impact. We live in Utah and we get these nasty, nasty air inversions. And I think we're already at level orange, which is, you know, means people, you know, that are uh, at risk shouldn't even go outside. Um, so we're, we're, you know, there's some, some environmental stuff, but I want to talk about productivity. And um, we have a good friend um, that is, is trying to resolve this. Uh, we can mention him in a minute. Um, working from home um, has its own benefits. There's some people, I'm gonna say like myself, that have worked from home. Um, I lived in the mountains for so many years and uh, didn't have contact. I would go days without having contact with other people. And so I'm very, very comfortable and very, very efficient um, in that environment. Just other people, that um, it drives them crazy, to be honest with you, not to yeah. have that teamwork aspect and that interaction. So, um. Well, I was just going to mention that, you know, I've been working from uh, a home office for more than two decades. And, you know, well, there's a couple of times where I, I work in an office because I have, a, I, I worked for uh, Capital One for a while and they insisted I had to be in the office because again, it was somebody had to take in and make sure everybody was in the office and working for the whole time they were there. And I'm going, you know what? You pay me on a contract basis, you know? I don't understand that. But you know what? It's been two decades, more than two decades that I've worked from home. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's a wonderful way to do it. Now, I do get out and about more than when you were in the canyons. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, you know I, I love going to networking meetings. And sometimes I just go, so I get that break. But, you know, there is a lot to be said for working from home. And today we're going to be talking about the two sides of that. We're going to talk about the owner and business manager side, the, the leadership side. And then we'll talk about the uh, employee side. And there are some things that are great on both sides, and there's things, considerations that need to be made on both sides of that. So we're going to start with the business owner, manager type stuff first. If you're not one of those and you want to skip toward the end, you can do that. Uh, and so we'll be glad to you know, have you just listen to that one uh, when we get to that. But, uh, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, the new normal, mm -hmm. you know, the... I, I'm going to tell you the story, and I, I've mentioned this to a few people over the years. Uh, there was a lady I used to work with, and she was working at Capital One the same time I was. And she was uh, trying to get Capital One to uh, basically do what we're doing now. You know, she was saying, you know, I don't know why we have to have everybody here in an office and everything. And they kept saying, oh, it's it's so that we can make sure everything is uh, restricted and, uh, uh, you know, that nobody's information is getting passed on and all kinds of different things. And, and you know, there's, there's a, a bit to that. But, you know, the 
last, uh, not last year, but the year, two years ago this March, when things shut down, she had gone to work for another company who said they wanted her to start doing a remote office program, but they hadn't implemented it yet because they were dragging their heels too. And she worked for a company out of Chicago and they had an office here in the Utah area. And she had 350 agents working for her under her and they immediately had to shut down that office. Now they were on two floors of a high rise building uh, just around the corner from where I live. Okay. So, but she had already gotten it all figured out in her mind how to do this. And so, but her bosses just simply refused to give up the control of having people in an office. When this happened, she started this program and two months into the program, they saw a 20% increase in productivity. Mm -hmm. They saw a drop in people not making it to work on time. So they had to fire them because they, they had a very strict code twice in, in two month period of you being late and you were out the door. That was it. Well, she went from having to fire people, uh, four or five people a week out of 350 to two people in two months, you know, because they could drag themselves out of bed, get to the, uh, into their desk and start their computer and they'd be online on time because they didn't have to drive in the snow and the rain and it, they didn't care if you were late because there was an accident on the freeway, you were late, doesn't you, matter. You know, there, there's been so many um, national um, kind of investigations in our activity um, since we've all been locked down. And like you say, it happened a couple of years ago. And um, honest to gosh, the first couple of months, um, you know, I'm gonna say three or four months, you know, businesses were scrambling to try and figure out what to do um employees were scrambling to figure out you know who do i whose email do i respond to and who do i don't or, or who do i do not and um you know it took a, a few months i'm you know i'm gonna say maybe six months but at the time six months was around you know like you mentioned you could get up make a pot of coffee walk to your computer flip on wear your pajama bottoms and have a nice shirt on and um you were in business. You were at the at the show. Yeah. Um, and it, and it, it, it's gone much deeper than that in the sense that, yes. um, you know, people can um, get their kids to daycare if they need to or walk their dog if they need to or um, go to the kitchen and, and have a, you know, mini break or whatever. But um, there's, uh, it, our efficiency has absolutely gone up. There's no question about that. But um, it's, it's some people still have this innate need to uh, collaborate. That's right. And that's what, that is one of the big things that has suffered from this new reality is the collaboration that that going out to the uh, water cooler and having a talk or, you know, hey, I was thinking about this project that we're working on. Here's some ideas and, the, and you have a two way conversation that is done on the spur of the moment. Collaboration is a huge thing for innovation. If you don't have innovation and, and you, you don't have the collaboration, you're not gonna get the innovation that it could be. You know, he, we in the United States are known for being able to create things that many other countries have never been able to even think of because of collaboration. Well, you know, where everybody is at, in, in their own home, that has become a problem. And so there's a lot of new ways of taking care of that. People jumped on uh, Zoom and uh, GoToMeeting and other places like that, and they tried to duplicate it there, and it just hasn't worked. Uh, you know, yes, you get the meetings, but it's like my son-in-law who works for Federal Express has said, Sometimes these meetings shouldn't have been a meeting. It should have been an email. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Um, productivity has absolutely gone up. Innovation has actually slid down a little tiny bit. 
and we're, we're more not, than a little tiny bit a lot actually yeah so it, it's and it's because we don't get to collaborate and bounce ideas off of each other um so i, I think that that's a big thing is that we need to figure out a, a better way to collaborate and and stay productivity or keep our product productivity high excuse me um while we still get the opportunity to have coffee and walk the dogs so you know and i like that uh, and so that, we mentioned one of our friends that both of us know very well uh he, he has a company that is putting together a new way of having a virtual office that has the benefits of being able to have immediate collaboration with other people in the office and it's a rather cool thing if you ever want to you want to know more about it i'll give you the information about them at the end of this and you can go and find out more but here's the cool thing that it does and i'm going to uh, describe this you set up your office any way you want and they have taken offices that are two floors and they had you know lots of people and they just simply put them into one big office but they've set it up so that, oh, here's all the marketing department over here. Here's the engineering department. Here is the uh, customer service department. Here's the uh, accounting. And, and they have each of them have their own department. Then you have, of course, they had people that have their own individual offices. And they have it so that you can walk into a room, into a conference room, and you can all hear each other, just like you were on a Zoom call. But here's the key thing, you can turn to the person beside you and have a, a side conversation without interrupting everybody. Isn't that cool? That's where collaboration happens. Then you go over here and you say, hey, I'm going to take a break. And in fact, in one of them that I love to go to, they have a, uh, a patio. And you, you move out to the patio and no, you're not seeing trees, but eventually you could. But, you know, you can be on the patio and people know that you're not in the office, but others can come out and meet with you out there and they can pop in and say, hey, how was the game the other night? And before long, you're talking about collaboration again of the business. And it's just such a clever idea. I mean, no, I, I have to say something yeah. and I, I want to tell everybody that Boyd is not a soothsayer, but... <laughs> Um, you know, two years ago when we all got shut down, um, Boyd and I were, were scheduled to actually go speak in person at an in-person conference up until the day before um, I kept calling the, it was going to be at the uh, Stevens Henniger College and um, kept calling the uh, manager and he said, you're on, you're on, you're on. The day before he called me and said, unfortunately, I have to cancel your advice. So he canceled us and then uh, Boyd, you know, to his credit, um, spun around and uh, less than two weeks later we had a four-day conference with nine different speakers and so nine, uh, nine speakers a day nine speakers a day excuse me i stand corrected and um what happened during that thing was it was really kind of revealing because most of these people were progressive thinkers and they looked at the situation looked at the covid um problem and almost without exception every one of them said it's never going to go back to normal. Well, we've proven now it's never going to go back to normal. We're going to see some resemblance of it, but it's not going to be the same. Well, I, I have a good friend that uh, works for an insurance company. And, and two years ago, they had just broke ground on this new fabulous, you know, six story building. And I, I used to tell her, I said, um, you guys will never occupy that building. And she goes, oh, yeah, yes, we are. We're going to get there and we're going to fill all those floors. And I said, you're insane. It'll never happen. So today, five of the six floors are for sale um, because they're not going to occupy the building. They've found that they were so much more productive, so much more efficient. Um, we got so much more done um, with having everybody be remote. There's no point in building that great big building. So, so so talking about from the business side, uh, you know, the owner manager type side, there's a few things that you have to take into to consideration. There are some people who need that interaction with people. Mm -hmm. There are some who work better when they're just on their own. Mm 
they they uh, you know they have a cu cubicle in your office a cubicle in their uh, in their home it doesn't matter they're going to get things done in fact they'll probably get more done in their home because they're not being interrupted there are some people who need to have you talking to them on a one-to-one -one basis you know a, a good coach or you know a leader is going to just simply sit down with every single person and find out what their goals are and a lot of other things that go along with a good coach uh, and leadership but one of the things that goes along with that is it's about making sure that the individual's needs are met because it's changed and you know in fact i was just reading an article here and it says you've got to uh, address feelings around inclusivity and isolation people just don't feel included as much some people feel isolated how do you do that how do you build the relationships between people when they were hired outside of being able to meet them in person. And uh, you've got to understand how to think about that for your business and how that's going to work. And then the last one is how to get continual productivity gains with connective solutions. I'll tell you, I, I was very impressed by one company. They pivoted from being a... they. They put together these uh, big elaborate business buildings and with lots of cubicles for uh, call centers and things. Well, they pivoted and they came up with a program where you, Mr. Owner, want to have everybody with the right products and programs and everything in the everyone's home so they can do the work you need them to do. So we'll provide, we'll come in and we'll put together an office. So we'll provide the desks, we provide the computer, we do provide uh, security, uh, and sometimes it's uh, the uh, internet connection that they need and all kinds of different things. So this one, so they are only coming in and doing it for one individual, but you know what? It costs a company about $3,000 a year for that equipment. It costs $8,000 a year for that equipment and the office space that they were occupying. This company was doing it for $650 per individual. And once it was done, they only needed to update it occasionally. Do you know this company is now making more money than when they were selling office furniture, but the companies that are hiring them are saving about seven thousand dollars a year on every employee and that, that, that benefit is huge it's um, huge and um that that's a great success story i don't want to dwell on anything negative but i know of a company that um, they taught systems and they would bring people in for these, these you know week-long programs and yeah. stuff and um they could it, it's ironic but they taught systems and how to systems in place so that you were successful and uh, they couldn't pivot. You talked about your company pivoting and being more successful. This company that we're teaching pivot, couldn't pivot. I mean, could, it's, could. Yeah, it, it's ironic. It's so. amazing. So, so the key is, is there is no right way for every company, but there are things that you need to consider every time you think about it. And, and I'm going to tell you an example. Uh, so my son-in-law I mentioned works for Federal Express in the corporate headquarters back in Memphis. Now, as of this week, they have gone back to completely everybody is working from home. They have not had 100% of everybody in the office since March 15th of 2020. Okay, They have had some of the groups that needed to do some collaboration that have come in and done some things here and there. And my son was one of those in that one of those groups. But what they did was they'd have half of their team come in on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays and half the teams coming in on uh, Mondays and Wednesdays. And that was working out okay. The problem was they were still getting on the same Zoom calls so that everybody could be in it, even though they were in the office. 
Uh, and so now they're back at home and they're going, yeah, we're, we're doing the same thing we did there. I don't know why we even went back. So you've got to pay attention to that. Uh, there's a company here in Salt Lake that uh, has, they're a big business company that they, they build these buildings and put in, you know, for uh, class A office space. And they are really hurting right now because companies have dropped back from like that one lady I was telling you about that had two floors on a building down to 1200 square feet on one floor. It's not even, I don't even think it's a, a, you know, a, a 20th or 30th of what she used to have that she was working from. By the way, that same lady is now going all over the country, downsizing and helping that company run it from remote completely. You know, that's kind of a great foray into to where we kind of started. Um, the state of Utah owns a significant, I mean, like a significant part of their portfolio was from owning uh, office space and renting office space downtown. And um, you go downtown today and it's, uh, I'm going to say a ghost town. Um, you know, there's a few restaurants and stuff that are still happening spots. A lot of the office towers um, that the state owned are in fact empty. Um, yeah. so it's, 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 it's pinching the budget a little tiny bit. Let's, you know, time is not too, too long here, but let's jump into the uh, economic, so, you know, environmental benefits of um, not having to drive your car to work. Um, state well, of Utah, Utah yeah. came, came out and said, if you can stay home, please stay home. And there's a, a lot of reasons for that. One, it does cut down on pollution. One, it cuts down on my uh, having to, by me not having to drive to Salt Lake every day for a work uh, a job that I work at, I save a lot in gas money, mm -hmm. wear and tear on my car. Uh, you know, I was, I got a, a notice from my insurance company that said, if you've uh, driven less than 5,000 miles during 2020, we're going to give you a, a, a rebate on your insurance. Okay, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of things that you're going to see. And, and there's big benefits in that uh, for both the employer and the employee. Oh, by the way, some of the employers that have been putting out that $8,000 are now paying their employees more. And that helps the employees too, because now they're working from home. They're doing all the things that they can, and their productivity went up. So why not pay it more? You know, the, the last month's or last quarter's sales or, or uh, employment report came out, and it was dismal. Um, and then on top of that, like another 4 million people quit their jobs, which is, you know, straight up insanity when you look at it from a historical perspective. Those people that quit their jobs are all moving up the ladder. They're all finding new jobs. They're all improving themselves and their family and, and everything else. So it's, it's um, the economy is in upheaval. Um, however, yeah, you can take that good or bad, I guess. Um, but we're, we're reinventing ourselves. And it's, it's exciting. It's a very exciting time to be in business. And, um, you know, I want all of you guys to, to figure out the best thing for you, the best thing for your business, the best way to conduct business, the best way to find um, new clientele. Um, it's, it's an absolutely uh, tumultuous, exciting time. I mean, I don't know how, how else to describe it. Right. You know, one of the fun things that I've seen is business owners are now hiring people that are better qualified from outside of their area. So I, the, I work with a company that they have people that are in Brazil, in the United States, in Canada, in India, in uh, Taiwan. And I think they even have some in Australia. They have, so what they've done is instead of saying, okay, I wanna hire the person down the street that uh, meets these criteria, I'm gonna hire the best person I can find in the world. And they are finding it and they're paying them great money, but they're the perfect person for it. 
And that's what this new reality has created. And that's why I think a lot of people are moving from these, you know, kind of mundane jobs that they would like to move up from. And they're finding that, hey, I'm really good at doing this. I want to go to work for a company in New Jersey, but I'm living here. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story. The guy that lives across the street from me, he is the head of the water department for Baltimore City. What? We're in Utah. <laughs> now, he does, he does go out there every once in a while to make sure everything's good. But you know what? He doesn't need to be doing uh, anything. He, he's looking at, you know, building waterways and all the other things. And he can do that all from his computer and over the phone and over uh, meetings that he does. He doesn't. And when somebody says, well, I've got to meet with you to show you my plans, he says, get online. Yep. And he does. And he loves that he can live here where his kids are. And so he can see his grandkids here instead of having to live in Baltimore where he doesn't get to see them only maybe once a year. But that's the thing. He can work from here and do the job that he was hired to do in Baltimore. It doesn't so matter it, where you're at. It's all about um, in remote day. And, um, you know, I, I want to say there's probably one or two people that slide a little bit on their, their uh, productivity. But most of us are much happier. Most of us are more productive and um, you can collaborate. And, and there's always the opportunity. Um, I mentioned my friend, they have days where people can go in and kind of collaborate and get together. But it's not every day of the week and it's one floor out of a six story building. Um, I mean, right. it's totally crazy. So, and right. everybody, I want you guys to be successful. We want you to be happy. And yeah. um, this is just one way that you can continue to do that. So, okay. um, well, let's talk about the other side of that. And that's the, for, we've kind of hit some of those things too, but for the worker that's working from home, and there's some cool things that have happened here, you know, and, and we mentioned that, you know, being able to walk the dog or take your child to to, uh, to school when it's snowy or something like that or whatever it might be. But one of the big ones that people have found is if both spouses are working from home, they're actually having lunch together. They don't have to travel an hour and a half each way to go to work. They can, they have more family time and people are finding that's more valuable than it is uh, to take a job that's an hour and a half drive to get there during rush hour. And so the, it's more job satisfaction is what this is. Mm -hmm. And so for you that are working from home, know that this is great. I mean, you're going to save on your wardrobe. You're going to save on going out to lunch every day. Now, Wait, you mean you just have to buy pajama bottoms and then a regular top? That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know, kind of like you. <laughs> I'm not going to stand up. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> you know, and, and you know, how much are you saving on not putting gas in that car? Okay, we talked about those kind of things. But you know, the, the stress of commuting is a big thing. And sometimes getting to work, you have to unstress before you can start work. Well, that's what you get for by working from home. Now, there are some disadvantages. You don't get to have the hobnobbing with some of the other people unless you take and set up a time to do that. And there are ways. Now, like I said, our friend who does, I'm going to tell you the name of the company is My Hive. When they put it together, they found that people loved being able to still hear that so-and-so was next door to them, like they were in the offices that they used to be in. And then they could, when they heard they were off the phone, they could, and they could see it on their screen. They could just simply start talking to them without having to set up a meeting. And between phone calls coming in, they could do the collaboration. It has become a huge thing for people. So, and you know, and one of the other things is, and I don't know about you, but when I went in and had to work in a, a an, I had an office at, uh, at Capital One. 
I didn't get to choose the chair. I didn't get to choose the desk. I didn't get to choose what's on the wall. I could bring some stuff in. I have everything that I want. I mean, look at my Star Trek and Star Wars and Doctor Who collection behind me. I have all my books that I read all the time right behind me. And I have at my fingertips everything that I would want. And when I get hungry, I walk down to the fridge and I can get something. This is why I love doing this and have done it for the last two plus decades. And so. You know, this is, I guess we both have worked from home for a long time. You know, you said two decades and I'm probably 12 to 15 years anyway. Yeah. Um, but 12 years ago, I had um, 10 or 12 different applications on my computer. I could communicate with my clients with and, and I want to, this is important I want to point this out I mean today zoom is kind of like the big thing but um, you need to have the ability to communicate with your clients or your peers or your bosses on whatever platform they want yeah so so make yourself available to more than just zoom I mean zoom will probably punish me for saying that because I did record everything. I'm going to shut you down. <laughs> but um, think of all the different applications that you can use. You know, Zoho has one, a couple of different Z uh, CRMs have one um, kind of embedded in them. So make it easy for people to communicate with you. And, and That's it. You know, and one of the best things I have is I can have a meeting back to back to back without having to travel to somebody's office or them to have to travel to my office. So when I get finished with one, I can go. I can go right into the very next one if I wish. Wait, I, I know you, and there's always a refrigerator break. You have to go get your diet coke filled out. So it's right here. I, I brought it with me today. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. righty. So, but you know, and, and that's that's a, a big benefit. Uh, you know, I get more, and this is part of why some people, especially salespeople, are actually excelling with this environment because now they don't have to get on an airplane to go to New York to meet with somebody for three hours and then fly home. They just do it online and everybody expects that now. Wait a minute, I miss New York. Oh, I know, I, I miss traveling too. But you know what? You make it more beneficial. It's, it's more efficient. Going. There's it no is. doubt it's more efficient. It is. It's, it's always nice to visit New York. Oh, there you go. Or you know, all kinds of. I, personally, I'll go visit Miami and Orlando and uh, Tampa and there, there San you Diego. Go. You know, all the all day long. But you know, <laughs> there you go. So you guys, it's it's exciting and it, it's an adventure for all of us. I mean, there's no question. But uh, you can always make the best of it and um, be successful, more successful. Um, I, I, and I, I do want to say this. I mean, I, I compliment Boyd all the time. But um, is, he has meetings, like sometimes, you know, six straight hours a day, and he never have, really has to leave the house. He's more efficient. He's more productive. He's kicking his game up. And um, I can see that, that happening. Um, so it it's, can be real. Well, it really can. You know, in fact, right after this, I have a me I have a one to one meeting with someone, and then I'm doing a training meeting for a, a customer that's an onboarding training. And, you know, and I'll work right up to the end of when my workday needs to be, and I won't have to move from. Well, okay, I'll I'll go get a diet coke or go to the restroom, and that's it. Mm. And, and I can, you know, at some point in there, there'll be a a 20 minute window where I can look at, oh, excuse me, look at my emails and uh, check those all out. But you know, this has become a new normal, Yep. you know, and there's lots of people who say, well, gee, there's lots of other programs out there that can do this. Let me tell you, it, put together what works for you mm -hmm. and your person and your business, because once you figure that out, then you're going to be much more effective in the job that you're doing, and you're going to be, uh, you're going to enjoy working more. And not that you're going to work more, because now you're going to get more time to go mountain biking or uh, walking the dog or doing whatever you like to do 
without having to work 16 hour days. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you for attending today. Yeah, that's, that's it, everyone. But uh, be happy and productive. And um, that's kind of what we wanted to talk about. So have fun with this. If you have other ideas for us, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can either talk to, you can send an email to me. My email is boyd at bpmedia.com. Jim's is jim at e as in echo, two dash t as in tom. Uh, s as in sam.com and the company we were talking about my hive go check them out yep, it's, absolutely. it's my m y h i v e you know like a, as in a beehive dot global and it is a global company in fact they are who i was telling you about that have people in multiple countries working for them and it's amazing all the different people that they do have working for them and how they it all seamlessly works together. So anyway, thank you so for being with us you've, today. You've been watching our uh, Tuesday instructional video. Uh, it runs from 2.15 till 3.15 Mountain Time every Tuesday. And then, of course, we have our podcast, the Entrepreneur Factory podcast, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And um, ironically, I'm going to throw this out there, we're always looking for a guest host. So if, if somebody wants to come on there and uh, has something relevant to say, not a commercial, relevant to say about business, uh, we'd love to talk to you. So, yep. um, and they can, sign, yep, they can sign up for that at bpmedia.com slash podcast. Yep. So okay. Do that. Thank Take you very everyone. much. And have a great 2022. You yes. guys, let's go. Bye.